31, let's see if we can figure out how to unpack this idea of vertical asymptotes and then how to identify vertical asymptotes from an equation and how to properly write up the equation of a vertical asymptote. All right, so let's have our rational function, our p's over q's, all right, written in lowest terms so everything's been reduced, and then consider any real number a. If f of x goes to infinity as x goes to a, then the line x equals a is a vertical asymptote. And if f of x is going to negative infinity as x goes to a, then x equaling a is also a vertical asymptote. <coughs> Excuse me, so let me show you what this is referencing. I want you to imagine you have a function and there's some x value, right? It's at a, right? This line x equaling a. So if I were to draw that vertical line in, it would look like this. What does it mean for f of x to go to infinity? Well, let's think about this. These are your y values. And when your y values are going to infinity, which direction are you headed? And you only ever have four directions, up, down, left, right. Well, if you're talking about y values, that's an up, down direction. And if it's positive infinity, it's technically up. So my graph is headed up as I approach x equaling a. Or potentially, f of x might be headed down as you approach x equaling a, but there's this boundary line, x equaling a, and then we're going to call that a vertical asymptote. Now, I'm going to show you how to find vertical asymptotes. It's not too terrible. If we want to find vertical asymptotes of rational functions, we want to determine the values of x that make the denominator zero. So math folks saw this connection, that wherever the denominator and only the denominator zeroes out, we tend to have, or not tend, we have vertical asymptotes at that value. Now, if I reference back to that trait table I gave you, if we're in the column that says rational functions, and I can't quite get this all on the same view screen, but I'm gonna scooch my paper down to where it says vertical asymptotes. All right, let me get that into view. So you see me saying here that the x value that zeroes out only the denominator is where our vertical asymptote will occur. And we're gonna write that equation in the form x equals a number. So let's practice that with the same four functions we were dealing with in example one. So I'm gonna scooch this paper up so I can see my four functions. And then we're gonna talk about the vertical asymptotes. All right, now I just wanna remind us, our domain here was negative infinity to six, and then six to infinity. Um, our domain on this function, and these again, same functions as example one. Um, I believe we gave the boot to negative two first, and then we went to three. All right, and the domain here was all real numbers. And the domain on this one was also all real numbers because for C and D, our fractions never zeroed out. All right, so how this works, if we can find a number that zeroes out only the denominator, we're going to have a vertical asymptote. So now when I set my denominator equal to zero here, I got x equaling six, right? That was the work we did on the first page. All right, we know when we plug in six, it zeroes out my denominator. What happens with my numerator? Well, if I plug in six, I get six plus four, so really I'd be looking at 10 over zero as a fraction. And I want you to see that only my denominator zeroes out. All right, they didn't both zero out at the same time. We'll have a, a trait that comes out when they both zero out, when both numerator and denominator zero out at the same time, that's a whole, we'll get to that. But right now, just my denominator zeroed out. So if that's the case, I would say I have a vertical asymptote at x equals six, okay? Now, if we remember here, I set my denominator to zero, right? And I factored to x minus three, x plus two, and we got three and negative two. Well, let's just check what happens when I plug three into the numerator, right? We know when I plug three in, I get a zero in the denominator. And I think you'll give me that I get a nine in the numerator. And I want you to notice that only my denominator zeroed out. And I'm gonna reference back to our trait table again, because I really wanna start making these connections, right? When I was in the, oops, let me show you, the rational functions column, 
right? When I'm talking about rational functions, there we go, rational functions, and I go to the row that says vertical asymptotes, it says the x values at zero are only the denominator. And so if we take a look back at this example, right? Only my denominator was zeroed out, so that means I have a vertical asymptote at x equaling three. Let's try it for f of negative two. If I plug in negative two, I know I get a zero on my denominator and I get a four on my numerator. So again, only my denominator is zeroing out. So I have another vertical asymptote at x equaling negative two. And you can start to be more efficient with this. I don't even necessarily need to plug three and negative two in because what's the value that zeroes out my numerator? Well, maybe you see it's negative six. So since I'm plugging in three and negative two, I, I know they're not gonna zero out my numerator because the number that zeroes out my numerator is negative six. And since these two numbers only zero out my denominator, they're both vertical asymptotes. All right, now for C and D, my domain was all real numbers. My denominator never zeroed out. So here I have no vertical asymptotes. And here I also have no vertical asymptotes. And I don't want you to think that for any problem you have to have a certain number of vertical asymptotes. It just depends on the equation. Now, before we get too much further, I do wanna show you what this starts to look like on your graphing calculator. If I hit my y equals, and let me clear that out, I wanna punch in this rational function. And be careful, put parentheses around those binomials. If you don't protect your binomials, if you just write x plus four, divide, oops, four, divided by x minus six, your calculator is going to do a very different graph. This is the correct equation that I, I wanna graph. Here, your calculator is gonna graph the line y equals x, plus four over x, and then minus six. So it would graph x plus four over x, and then minus six. It's gonna use PEMDAS. So be really careful with that. All right, I'm gonna hit zoom six. And remember, we thought we had a vertical asymptote at x equaling six. You can kind of see it here, right? There is an unsaid vertical line that my function won't cross, right? It's not crossing the line x equaling six. And I want you to see, I'm gonna scooch this back down so I can relate it to our initial definition. All right, we're saying as x goes to six, what happened to my y values? Well, on this side of six, my y values went to negative infinity, I headed down. On the right side of six, as I head towards six, my y values are headed up to positive infinity. So it is fitting that definition of vertical asymptotes. All right, so with that, we're gonna keep these functions and we're going to look at horizontal and slant asymptotes or what we can just lump together in the phrase end behavior. All right, that's coming in the next example. I'll see you in a bit, bye.